Good morning and welcome to Morning Java, brought to you as always by Get Go Cafe and Market, where right now you can get a special deal for a breakfast combo for $3.99, get you a small coffee, hash brown, and a great breakfast sandwich. Or you can get two breakfast croissants for $6. That's a good amount of food for six bucks. Indeed, indeed. But let's talk about what the Steelers did at Heinz Field in their third preseason game. The stars, the starters came out. You saw you saw three drives of Ben Roethlisberger. He got the offense on the board. Steelers win 16 to six. Dale, what are what are some of your biggest takeaways of this game? Well, I think the defense is what everybody was talking about coming out of the game against Green Bay. But the sky was falling, Dale. The sky was the sky falling. Was falling. Uh, nobody made. I mean, I made note of the fact that they weren't playing with Cam. No Cam Hayward. No mm-hmm. Joe. Uh, Hayden, mm-hmm. no T.J. Watt, no Mike Hilton. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else are we missing? Uh, uh, pretty, pretty much everybody. And, and Mike Hilton was five healthy. He was yeah. like, they, they just said, hey, go take a rest. Uh, well, we found out recently that Mike Hilton's been dealing with a back issue. Uh. So, But either way, they're playing without five of their frontline starters on defense. And so they come out today. You see Hayward out there. You mm-hmm. see you see uh, Hilton, or no, I'm sorry, Hayden, Hayden out there. Uh, a lot of those guys were back out on the field. No, mm-hmm. Bur- no Morgan Burnett. No T.J. Watt, but everybody else who's going to be a starter is out there, and they were dominant. They were, and I I think one of the most dominating defenders uh, today was, or well, of this of the game was Stephon Tuitt. He came in, he had a sack in the game. Seemed like early, especially those early downs, he was getting that push. He was driving, he was creating space, and that's the kind of work that they that, that they want to see out of him because they need him and Hayward to be the interior pass rushers and just wreak havoc upon NFL offensive lines. Yeah, when people keep asking how the Steelers' defense can be better than it was last year without Ryan Shazier coming back, they don't take into account that guys can improve. Yes. And we still haven't seen the best of Stephon Tuitt. He's still 25 years old. Yep. We still haven't seen the best of Arnie Burns, Sean Davis. There's a lot of guys on this defense who can improve, and maybe we're starting to see some of that improvement. So, Dale, one of the uh, one of the highlights I wanted to talk about was Matthew Thomas. He was all over the field. The Steelers continue to like to use this guy, and even with the first team defense, you saw it was John Bostic and Vince Williams on the early downs, but on third downs, you saw Matthew Thomas working his way out there with the personnel, playing a little bit of outside linebacker, always out there in coverage, running with the, with the faster guys. Well, what they did was, was they were taking Anthony Ciccolo off the field and bringing Matthew Thomas in, so they're, they're subbing in him in for an outside linebacker, and then they were going to kind of a, a 4-3 look or even a 3-3-5 look we saw as well. Um, they did this a little bit uh, last year against Jacksonville. They did it against New England. In those situations, they were taking uh, T.J. Watt off the field in some situations. Some were, was Bud Dupree. So uh, this isn't something that's brand spanking new it's for the Steelers. What's going to be interesting is what do they do when T.J. Watt comes back? Very good question because T.J. Watt has been good both as a pass rusher and in coverage in the past. And I think also what's going to be looked at, you saw a lot of L.J. Fort getting to the ball and both him and Thomas showing their, their speed. And even though they're not guys that are going to work their way up the depth chart, they're showing that, hey, these are guys we can plug and play in these situations and they can work against the run and cover the pass. And I asked guys what they like about him. They said speed. There you speed. go. So Terrell Edmonds got his first interception in a Steelers uniform, albeit a preseason game. Still a good play. You're seeing that change of direction that he showed at Virginia Tech and why the Steelers selected him in the first round. Yeah, I mean, he could be a dynamic playmaker. You saw him uh, step inside of Taiwan Taylor on that Mm -hmm. play. There was some pressure from Bud Dupree. Forced Marcus Mariota out of the pocket, Mm -hmm. uh, rolling to his left, and he tried to throw back across his body. body, Always a no-no. And and that gave Edmonds the opportunity to step inside Taiwan Taylor and make the pick. And uh, he's a guy, he, he, we saw some of that at training camp. We saw him make some interceptions. He's got good hands, mm-hmm. uh, but he's also, he's a bright kid, asks a lot of questions, uh, seems very humble, and uh, he looks like a keeper. And what really was it was, was, it was really cool about that play was when you watch it, when you look back at it, you see Edmonds was playing a, a middle zone. He didn't have to run with Taylor across the field like he did, but he saw that Mariota was breaking that way, and he said, look, I may be in responsible for this middle of the field, but he's going that way, and so is this receiver. He trailed him perfectly, just on his back shoulder, and as soon as he saw that pass, broke on it, made the interception. That's smart football right there, and he's a rookie still developing. And also, I thought it was really interesting was how he got up and was moving really scramble, well. Scramble, scramble, He was getting up the field pretty quickly. Good signs from the rookie first round draft pick right there. So Dale, the Steelers had six sacks in the day in a game where they only allowed six points and that came in the back end of the game. Um, 
the defense was really getting after the quarterback, and not just when Mariota was out. When he was in there, Stephon Tuitt, Cam Hayward, Vince Williams were all getting in the ad. Bud Dupree had a sack. Um, those are four starters right there that the Steelers are going to need to see pressure from all throughout this season. Well, Bud didn't have a sack in this game. He had one in the well, last sorry. game. Yeah, he but he did, have, he did uh, force some pressure. He forced the interception by mm-hmm. chasing down Mariota from behind. And, and this is the kind of stuff that you want to see out of this defense. You want to see those front guys, yeah. the front four guys especially, getting to the quarterback, and they were dialing up some pressure, and it was getting home, and, and, and Mariota did, did not look good. No. And we're talking, you know, people, people on Twitter are like, well, I, you know, it's just it's Marcus Mariota. Marcus Mariota had them in the playoffs last year. Yeah, I mean, he had that one play where he tossed a touchdown to himself that was remarkable. But, I mean, he's, he's been a competitive quarterback. He's a first-round draft pick. This guy is supposed to be a person that, that's supposed to be taking teams in the, in, in the right direction. But the defense creating the pressure. And that's the thing. I don't care if who, who, was, who was back there. The fact that they're getting back there and they're executing these blitzes and winning with four-man rushes, that's going to allow Keith Butler to be very creative with the secondary and say, okay, we're going to be able to throw these covers back just because we can just rely on these guys to create pressure. The other thing that happened today is they shut down the running game again. That's two weeks in a row, and that put them in good situations to get after the passer. 